Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski, a general dentist practicing outside of the Detroit area in Bingham Farms, Michigan. Today's topic will be atraumatic extractions, where we can predictably remove teeth where our patients have a positive response to our actions. But many of our patients are very apprehensive about such treatment. And many dentists, many general dentists, just don't like to remove teeth. And why would that be? Well, our patients are afraid because of bad experiences they've had in the past. And dentists don't necessarily like to take difficult teeth out because, just as I said, they're difficult. So we're gonna do step-by-step -step demonstrations and hopefully you'll be able to refresh your memory by reviewing this DVD frequently when you're doing a procedure and try to give you techniques that are incredibly predictable. We're going to remove a very badly broken down, fractured, maxillary right cuspid tooth using the innovative physics forcep and the forcep has two components the beak which will engage the lingual or palatal surface of this root this is the working end of the instrument as it creates tension along the periodontal ligament and the bumper is placed as high up the vestibule as possible as you can see I am now rotating my wrist not my forearm not squeezing the instrument towards the corner of the patient's right eye, creating tension onto the palatal surface. And after a few moments, the tooth disengages or moves a millimeter or two. The instrument is not intended to remove the tooth in total, so we'll take a tooth delivery instrument to try to grab onto this fractured bicuspid tooth and remove it. Uh, it can be a difficult process trying to grab onto the fractured root surfaces. Um, you can see this is a very badly broken down tooth. But the periodontal ligament has been disengaged and the tooth is basically mobile. And I'm just trying to use an instrument to elevate the tooth out of the socket. I'm trying to create a purchase point. You can see how badly decayed this tooth is. So I'm taking my instrument. The tooth is actually fractured vertically. I was able to remove one piece. Then we'll go in and simply remove the other broken, fractured root tip from the socket. Now you can see the significant facial defect in this area, and so since we've already anesthetized the patient and, and removed the tooth and created a lot of trauma with them, I'm going to use a scalpel to create a flap. Now you can see my incision is, is maintained into the attached gingiva. I'm not going into the mucosa. And I try not to go into the mucosa if possible. That just creates a lot of prostaglandin release and subsequent discomfort, uh, more discomfort for the patient. So we're just going to very gingerly elevate the tissue, the attached tissue, from the socket site. And what I want to show is not only the socket, which is a truly a four-wall defect, it's a serial bolt, so to speak, but we also have a significant facial defect that I want to correct with my grafting materials. So we're just kind of elevating gingerly on the facial, but we also, remember, have to elevate the palatal surface. We want to be able to place our membrane at least minimally two millimeters uh, apical to the remaining bone surface. So I'm elevating the tissue so that I can place my subsequent membrane properly so that it's passively placed it won't pull out and allow us to do a real nice nice job so here you can see the significant facial defects uh, that we're trying to correct with our allograft material we're going to use a resorbable membrane cut to the proper side and what I do first is I'm trying to engage the bone surface at least two millimeters on solid bone. So I'm putting my, my resorbable membrane on first, then I'm going to take my allograft material which has been wetted with uh, sterile water, sterile saline, in this situation it was sterile water, and we create kind of a putty-like consistency. It will be very easy for me to, to take this material to the site and uh, simply pack my allograft material into the facial defect initially but then into the remaining socket site. We're trying to prevent further uh, bone shrinkage and we're trying to prepare a site for a future implant um, uh, after proper healing. So I'm just simply packing. I'm not packing firmly 
Rather, I'm lightly packing the material, trying not to break down the, the crystal, so to speak, um, so that we're doing it uh, in, a, in a proper dimension. I'm just simply removing uh, or moving the, the material so that we can um, uh, add our allograft material, and then we will simply cover over the site with our, our uh, resorbable membrane product. Removing any excess that we may have, filling that socket, and what our hope is is to create a nice facial contour and a healthy socket site for an eventual uh, implant preparation. I'm just going to dab it with a little um, uh, sterile gauze, and you can see how the particle sizes are maintained. And we will pull over the resorbable membrane shortly to properly position our material. So it takes a little time, a little effort um, to be able to, to do this, but when done properly we can very predictably grow bone or maintain bone nicely. We want our membrane to engage the palatal surface as well as the facial surface. We don't want any folds uh, in there, so again you have to manipulate the the membrane properly so that it's very passively retained in the socket site. I'm here I'm using a, um, a Vicryl type of suture and we're going to, what I like to do is I like to take my needle from the crestal to the facial and then from the crestal to the palatal and then I'm simply tying my knots to establish proper contours of the tissue. So just take some time manipulate the tissue and you can see we have attached gingiva present there's our mucosa further down and if we can get a band of three four millimeters of attached gingiva we're going to have an excellent uh, site for a future implant uh, or for future implant placement and you can see the sutures are maintaining the area there's nothing pulling or tugging those sutures apart I'll remove the sutures in about a week for more information and to watch several more clinical videos, please visit physicsforceps.com or call 1-877-987-2284.